I'm Ian Williams. I'm speaking with Liz Howard, author of Letters in a Bruised Cosmos, published by McClelland and Stewart, and one of the three Canadian finalists for the 2022 Griffin Poetry Prize. Hi, Liz. Hi, Ian. It's a true honor and pleasure to be speaking with you today. Likewise. In a few sentences, how would you describe your collection? Well, my book is interested uh, in this idea of the cosmic bruise, which is a really great metaphorical name given to a region of space, which could be uh, the mark of a collision between our universe and another universe early uh, in its formation. And also Bagana Gishig, uh, which translates from Anishinaabe Moen or Ojibwe to the hole in the sky. And it roughly corresponds to the constellation known as the Pleiades. And it's said to be a portal between this world uh, and spirit. And I've sort of engaged with these concepts as lenses through which to examine uh, what is possible after great suffering and what it means to survive. And I've refracted a lot of my personal experience and general poetic practice through these lenses um, to grapple with um, a number of things such as, you know, coming to self-reflective consciousness during a difficult childhood, working in a cognitive neuroscience laboratory where I was in a sense looking into the brains of strangers, meeting my birth father for the first time and him you know, sadly passing away almost immediately and going through the grieving process of that, um, surviving sexual violence, family history, and the legacy of, of assimilation and colonization, love, and also the resistant and resurgent and transform transformative power of language as art. Hmm. So you've looked at the sky and stars and space, and you've looked into the brains of strangers, you just said. Um, your brain always seems cosmic to me, right? I imagine you like sort of pinging away between ideas, like between planets and stuff. What does it feel like to be inside your head? I would certainly say that the experience of reading the book would be pretty close to what it's like uh, inside my brain. I feel like my brain is very busy um, and um, I'm always sort of try, uh, constantly trying to, to grapple with all of this sort of complexity, you know, while being, you know, a, a limited creature, right? As we all are sort of limited in time and space and cognition. Mm -hmm. um, now, where did your fascination with space, where did that begin, right? I imagine you as a girl with a telescope looking up <laughs> at the stars, but uh, were you reading encyclopedias about space? Where did this love come from? Well, I think it comes from, you know, I think you're not, you're not too far off the mark in terms of uh, being a little girl and, and, and gazing up at the sky, because that's something that I I certainly uh, did a lot of, especially growing up in far in rural Northern Ontario, where you can see so much of the sky um, and so many stars, uh, especially on a clear uh, winter night. But I've just generally been interested in in systems. So you know, the book is interested in things on a sort of grand uh, space time scale in terms of you know the the end and origin of, of the cosmos, but it's also concerned, you know, with things operating on, on the quantum level and the biological, physical level, the biological level, then the personal and then the social and store socio-historical and so, and so on and, and so forth. Um, yeah, in terms of the personal, uh, I got to the middle of the book to the allergy there uh, for your father, and I didn't really recover for the rest of the book. It stayed with me with a pretty heavy weight. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that poem? Yes, the, the poem began as kind of a, a letter to a friend, a friend who is also um, a, a writer. And uh, I was writing it when I had been sort of called away to um, be with my father, my, be with my birth father um, while he was unfortunately uh, passing away. He had sort of lived kind of off off the grid as it were uh for a number of years but he resurfaced um in the medical system there and his his health was failing and uh and ultimately you know he was going into liver failure and i went there to uh, join my aunt uh to be present with him to see you know maybe like that he would 
possibly recover, but unfortunately he didn't. So I was there um, when he when he passed. And then also because technically I was next of kin, um, and so I was part of all of these conversations as to you know what sort of services would be in order uh, regarding a funeral and um, you know what should be I you know done with the body in terms of interment or cremation uh, and so I stayed in Halifax for a week to help my aunt uh, make all of these decisions and also speak with her and get to know her because we'd never really met uh, in person as adults uh, and it was also the first time that I sort of met my <laughs> and met my father and then he sort of just died um, and so writing you know this sort of letter uh, but it, in a way but through a kind of the frame of writing to a friend who's also interested in, in literature and, and in poetry, I was able to sort of, to, to grapple with, you know, um, the grief and, and, the, and the immensity of, uh, of the circumstances that I found myself in. Mm. Well, we'd love to hear you read a sample of any poem, not necessarily that one. Yes, I'm gonna read a very short poem for you uh, called Spring Letter. Waboos, Tracking through the last of snow, love is a route I stumble over in search of you. Geese fly backwards in my mind, a rewind that a stand of tamaracks sees just perfectly. There is no way to trap the anxious rabbit of me, as my hide also reorders itself inside the brush of wide time. Thank you. I've been speaking with Liz Howard, author of Letters in a Bruised Cosmos, a Canadian finalist for the Griffin Poetry Prize.